have the biggest and most versatile spellers of any class, but they are also the most limited in their overall the magic they can cast in terms of how many times they can cast magic, what magic they can cast per day, and how they learn spells. Like they have, it takes a while as a wizard to learn a new spell. They are also the only class that will one hundred percent give a bag of holding to every single time. Oh yeah, because 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 you need so many different components to cast your spells. It's it's insane. Um, and, and wizards, unlike most of their classes, um, they don't, each different subclass, they have actually almost, actually have about as many subclasses as the um, cleric does. The subclasses only really do something for whatever school of magic you're into. It isn't really like, it's not like, oh, I, you just get these certain things that fit your, your niche. But it just, hey, guess what? This school of magic is, um, this, this is your school of magic that you're really good at. You can still cast other spells, just that's it. So, briefly going over um, the races now. That, that's, that's all the classes. Um, dwarves, uh, stereotypical Tolkien dwarves. Tough, strong, uh, sturdy. Tristan. A little too close to the ground. Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> just Tristan's an actual, like, not, he's, Tristan, Tristan's not like... He's a tall dwarf. No, no, he, he, Tristan is like a Tolkien dwarf. He's not, he's like an like actual, like, super bearded, broad shoulder. I think he's like five, six, five, five. Mm. Just, just stout, stocky. Uh, so, yeah, so there's a hill dwarf and there's a mountain dwarf. They're both, no matter what, no matter what you, nah, no matter what one you pick, um, it's definitely, they are, they're just sturdy. It's a sturdy race, very, very, uh, just good at good at being either blacksmiths or doing stuff with stonework. Uh, good in the fighting in the dark. And if he or she is not an alcoholic, you're playing your dwarf wrong. Yes, we must we must follow the rules given to us by Gary Gygax, the ancient stereotypes, or else I wasn't Matt Mercer's gonna come and throw foam noodles at us from the corner of our room. Yeah. <laughs> God, it's hard. It's hard not to talk about the races and classes without making Joe Cat references the entire time. Well, Joe Cat by himself is a reference. Uh, he uh, he did such a good job. Um, elves, high elf, good at casting magic. Wood elf, you are the best damn archer in the game. Dark elf, drow, everybody doesn't trust you. <laughs> Do you want to feel racism? Play dark elf. Ooh, that's a topic. Uh, halfling. It's. Do you, yeah, did you ever want to be a hobbit from, from uh, Lord of the Rings? Halfling. <laughs> the human. The most broken race in the game. The reason why a human has, uh, is busted because either you choose to increase every single one of your ability scores by one, or you have the option to choose two different ability scores to increase by one. You get a proficiency and then you get a feat. And as I said earlier, feats are um, extra abilities you get as you level up. So having one starting off the bat <clears throat> can be very, uh, it can be very powerful. I had somebody pull a, at level one with a human, grab the improvised weapon, or the tavern brawler feet, <laughs> and that was terrifying. Yeah, yeah, So, he, back to where I was. He instantly started beating motherfuckers with other motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once. Uh, Dragonborn. Do you want, not, not Skyrim kind, do you want to be an actual, like, part dragon person? Um, be Dragonborn. Do you, you want to be not a tiny kobold? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you also, you also have different types of breath, weapons, acid, lightning, fire, cold, all that stuff. Um, no. Do you want to be a hobbit, but good at magic? <laughs> do you want to be a hobbit, but wear shoes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to be good at magic and wear shoes? That's it. Uh, no one's also be someone sturdy depending upon the sub the sub race you pay. Mm -hmm. Half elves. If you don't want to fully commit to being <laughs> filthy knife here, how to go how to go that route? <laughs> I'm out, guys. <laughs> well, well, you can have your chain. Your chain, remember? <laughs> you can't leave the chair. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no, seriously though. If you don't want, if you want, if you want the kind of the mix of, hey, I'm also human. Hey, I'm, ha hey, I'm part elf. That whole mixed uh, race thing. Then you can definitely uh, half elf has a lot of different variety in what they can and can do. And our cameraman's walked off again. Uh, half orc. Half orc the is pretty much other one that you aren't trusted with. <laughs> uh, half orc is pretty much whenever you, um, if your DM does not allow you to play a full orc, which that's a, that's that's a common thing. Generally, if you play as an orc, you are almost always tied to being evil naturally. 
half orcs are not tied to that. They're just they're very generally neutral, and they can be evil and they can be good. It just depends on like, like like humans, they're poss they're capable of great good and great evil. Half orcs, if you want to be super tanky, buff, and just plow, plow through things with your un unadulterated strength, half orc. Tiefling, you so were. <laughs> Tiefling, you were once you, your parent once boned a devil, or got boned by a devil, or a demon. We don't want to talk about that. <laughs> uh, but Tief mind, though. Uh, <laughs> but Tieflings are naturally uh, they have they have tails and they generally have horns, and uh, their skin color can change. Uh, the book says red. That's wrong. That uh, point. Book says red. Or the word said red. The picture says purple. Yeah, exactly. you choose your flavor. Yeah, exactly. But um, they are naturally charismatic. Uh, they have dark vision. They res res resistant to fire. They're actually a very tanky race when you look at them. But um, they're, they're the tanky rage race. All right. So that's overall the races. Uh, the tiefling barbarian. All right. So the final thing I'm going to go over before we kind of wrap this up is once you've kind of picked your race and you picked your class, uh, next you'll have to pick is your um, your ability your abilities. So you have your ability score. Your abilities are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. When picking your stats, you have three options. One is the uh, standard uh, point array, which is where you um, you pick uh, stats from a from a standard point array, uh, which is oh God, where that is this list, which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and eight. You put those you put those stats wherever you need to. Um, depending upon what your class is. Like I said, your class will have certain stats that you use more than others. So you want to pick... And, and in, this, in the book, it tells you what stats you want for the character. Um, so it'll tell you the two primary stats that class uses. And the rest of the stats, you, you put towards how you want your character to behave. Your dumb stat. Uh, ability score, uh, the, uh, the, the buy system is a... Uh, Which I think is garbage. It's a system where you just buy your stats... Where uh, you have 27 points to spend, and you spend them appropriately to whatever to increase uh, your stats. When they all start at they all start at eight, and you just increase them up from that point on. Uh, after that, you have the system that I generally use, but I always offer every system. But I <laughs> generally end up using because players want uh, to roll with the power of randomness on their side. R in Jesus. Uh, yes, which is. You roll four and you take the lowest one out, which has the greatest potential of high, uh, super high stats. Having a base eighteen starting off, which means with some races you can have a start off with start off the game with a twenty, or don't you look at me, or you, you can let end, it happen, or you can end up with a three in intelligence because you don't need this make good. Mark, I just need to hit stuff hard. Hit, pick. Uh, if you mind, seven is where you're where you're aware of your of your own existence. Intelligence of seven is when you're aware of your own sentience. So if you're under that, you're no better than Al. <laughs> you <can> rock good. <laughs> I'm just imagine an orc, a half orc with a three and does going, whoo, 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 whoo. That's all he does. Is just talk to Al. Did you see him in a tree? Some little kid is like, <laughs> no, I'm really big Al. He's a half orc ranger. Oh. He's just talking. Yeah. He just no. He can only speak oh. out. He can only oh. speak out. He can only speak out. How, how did this? Um. How did this video degrade to us just hooing at each other? <laughs> Woo! Woo! No. All right. So, but in all seriousness, um, uh, pick how or go over if you're wanting to get in this game. Find find someone. Go to your local game store. Find out if they if they play D and D, or find out if there is anyone there who does runs games. Uh, they'll be able to help you with this. It does seem a little daunting, the page, uh, the character sheet page, but it's not really over that overly complicated. You do They're, one, and they'll all just fall in. It's easy after one. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that's the yeah, final words you want to add on to this before we cut. No, I feel like the whole, we could go deeper into the whole why uh, oh, yeah. you get stigma for yeah. races in yeah. a different video when we have all three of us in here. Yeah. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much everything we wanted. I wanted to cover off this, um, yeah. Which the, with the kind of the basics of building classes. We will go in more in depth on your backgrounds and, and other stuff in building. And we can actually go over and just. Uh, I think next. I think the next uh, next video we do on 
a D and D. We might actually just go ahead and just make a class, to, uh, make a character to show everyone the process. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. All right. So no talk. All right. So I'm Jimmy, and I'm Joe, and we can't wait to see you at our table again. Bye. <laughs>